Today's lesson is called line of best fit. So we're going to look at a situation around star real estate. So let's say you are a realtor for the company Star Real Estate in a Midwestern city. You have a new client who wants to sell their home. They need your help trying to decide how much they should sell their home for. To determine their home's selling price, you collected the data below that indicates the sizes and sale prices of various houses sold in the city. So if you take a look at the table, the table's just kind of been split up into two sections instead of making it really long. So on the left <clears throat> and the X, you have size and square feet. In the Y on the right, you have price in dollars. A scatter plot of this data is below. So all of those data points have been created, used to create a scatter plot, and here it is. So what I'd like you to do right now is pause the video and answer the question underneath the graph. If your client has a 3,000 square foot house, how much would you recommend for their home's sale price? So take a minute to make a determination and then you can resume the video. So if we're looking at this, if you're trying to determine if you, what your client should price their house at, if it's 3,000 square feet, one thing we want to do is pay attention to the general trend of the data in the scatter plot like we did in the previous lesson. So if I kind of create what I would say would be like a barrier, following the pattern, you want to be somewhere between those two blue lines so that when we find 3,000, we can follow it up and make a prediction about maybe where we would want to price that house. And anywhere within those two blue lines would be reasonable. So take a look at your answer to this question and see if you picked a number that would seem reasonable. Anything that's kind of in line with the point I made in between these two darker blue lines showing that it kind of falls in path with the rest of the trend. Now moving on to the next page, it says overpricing the home may cause it not to sell and pricing it too low may cause your client to potentially lose out on thousands of dollars. So how can we get a more precise sale price? The answer to that is use the line of best fit. So if you recall from the last lesson, the line of best fit is the straight line that represents the pattern or trend of the data. Lines of best fit have an equation that we can use. So think back to the previous chapters we've had. We know there's an equation of a linear function or a straight line, which is always the form y equals mx plus b. So we can actually write an equation for our line of best fit in that same form, y equals mx plus b. So looking at question one, if the line of best fit is modeled by the equation y equals 177.91x minus 113,474, what is the predicted value, we're going to underline that, of a 3,000 square foot house? So when you see the words predicted value. Let's make a little arrow with a star. That means you are using the equation, and that would be the equation of the line of best fit to make your predictions. If we wanted to know the actual data point, we would go back to the table and look at the table of values. Since we're going to predict, we're going to take our equation and we need to find it for a 3,000 square foot house. So if you recall, if I go back, size is on the x-axis. It's on the left-hand side. This is an x variable. So that means they're telling me x equals 3,000. So all we have to do is substitution. My equation is y equals 177.91. And where the x used to be, I'm now going to put 3,000 instead. I can then go to my calculator and type that in to find out that y is approximately, because you may you have to do some rounding, we're going to do 420,256. So now you can kind of go back and take a look at the prediction you made. Were you close? How far off were you? And then obviously the best way to get the best prediction we now know is to use the equation instead. So use the equation to determine either the x or the y, it can go either way, to make the best prediction. So now let's look at example two. 
Use the scatter plot to answer the following questions. So you're going to see we have the scatter plot that we looked at on the first page, but now the line of best fit has been added to that. And we are going to use it to answer some questions. So question A says, what is the cost of the most expensive house? Circle that point on the scatter plot. So if I look at my scatter plot, I'm looking for the most expensive house. That would be the highest y value. So looking at the scatter plot, that point is going to be right here. Now, if I try to read the graph to figure that point out, it's very difficult. But I can see here that it's over in the 5,000s for the square footage. So I'm going to go back to the table of values. And I'm going to look for the one that had square footage of about 5,000. And I see there's one number in particular. It's in this row. So now I know the exact coordinate of that point. So we'll go back. And from the table, we know that this coordinate is 5,232 and then 1,050,000. And I'm just going to put a little arrow up here with a note that we got the coordinate from the table to be exact. So over here, I circled it. What is the price of the most expensive house? It's going to be $1,050,000. Okay. Now the next one. They want us to choose a data point in the scatter plot and describe what it means. So if I look, I chose this point. And it, this is just an example. Obviously, there's lots of choices you could have. So I have the point 2,000 and then 209,900. Now, again, if you weren't sure, you know, you could go look at the table of values again to make sure you know the exact location. Now, what does this mean, though? Keeping in mind that this is X and this is Y, X is square footage. So that means a 2,000 square foot home. And then the Y value is a price, right? So I'm going to say costs. $209,900. So that's what an actual data point represents on the scatter plot, the square footage and the price for that square footage. Now, using the line of best fit, we're going to find the predicted value for a 4,000 square foot home. But the trick with this one is they want us to use the line, not the equation. So if I'm using the line, I'm going to find 4,000 I'm going to follow it up and see where it hits the line. It hits a little bit below 600,000. So I'm going to make an approximation of approximately 590,000. And that's from me just using the line of best fit to make my prediction. Now, if I really want the most accurate, I'm going to go and actually use my line of best fit equation. So this time using the line of best fit equation, right? The line of best fit modeled by the equation y equals 177.91x minus 113,474. What is the predicted value? So what that again means, use the equation. It's just the predicted. It's not the actual data point. And this time it's for a 1,500 square foot house. So if they're talking about the square footage, they're talking about an X value. This is telling me X is 1,500. So in my equation, I will replace X with 1,500. And then I'll type that into my calculator, and my answer is approximately $153,000 391. Okay, so now you know that to follow the general trend, you can make a prediction, but there's a lot of wiggle room in there. So to make a more accurate and precise prediction, it is best to use the line of best fit. And you can do that graphically or 
you can use the equation to get your prediction. And that concludes your lesson on line of best fit.